One of the proudest and most historic programs in the SEC are the Florida Gators. Ever since I've been watching college football, the Gators were near the top of the SEC, have won multiple national championships, and were always one of those programs that every recruit wanted to play for. While the latter still may be true, Florida football has really fallen off over the last few years. Besides their one big season in 2020, the Gators have been disappointing the last few years. While there was a ton of optimism when Billy Napier was hired and after their week one victory over Utah, things have really fallen apart for them over the last two seasons and they were really bad in 2023. Right now, many think that Billy Napier has lost control of the program and Florida no longer feels like they're at the top of the SEC. It feels like they're just like everybody else and to Florida standards, that is not good. In today's video, I want to talk about how Florida got to this point. We're going to talk about why the last few years have been so rocky, what has caused this, and what the future is going to look like for them. But before we get started, if you're a big college football fan, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you want to support today's video, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now let's get started and talk about the sad and slow death of the Florida Gators. In May of 2023, there was a huge article published by The Athletic about the downfall of Florida. It led with this, quote, Since we won our last national championship, we've had years where we've had some good success, but we've been incredibly erratic with some incomprehensible lows that you would not expect from the University of Florida. When you walk into their facilities, there are banners all over the place. They have eight official SEC titles, and they have three national championship footballs. Those came in 1996, 2006, and 2008. Florida was arguably one of the most dominant football programs during that time, but since then, they've only had a mild taste of success. They did have two good years in 2015 and 16, as under Jim McElwain, they had two SEC East titles, but they were absolutely awful in those championship games, and the offense was seemingly always dead in the water. After that, they decided to hire Dan Mullen away from Mississippi State, where he consistently made bowl games, and many thought that he could be the next big thing there. He now had more resources than a school like Mississippi State had, but he could never get them over the hump. He did bring them to three consecutive New Year's Six Bowls, but many were not happy with his recruiting, some of the ways he dealt with the media, and how that 2020 team ended up. In my opinion, they were one of the top four teams in college football that year, but they had that dumb loss to Texas A&M, and then an even dumber loss to LSU. They were quite competitive in the SEC Championship game against Bama, and they really wasted that offense with Kyle Trask, Kyle Pitts, and Kadarius Toney. They should have done much better, and many believe that Dan Mullen should have gotten into the college football playoff that year. Because of that, he ended up getting fired. There are many reasons why Dan Mullen got fired, but ultimately it was underachievement, and I guess he just wasn't a great look for the university anymore. He also didn't even seem that interested at times, but now they're moving on to the guy who everyone thought was the best hire going into 2022. I mean, personally, I thought Billy Napier was the next big thing. He learned under Nick Saban, had developed Louisiana into one of the top group of five programs, and had that mentality that I thought could win big. Florida could give him whatever he wanted, and he would have all the money, resources, and anything to make it happen. To me, it was a ball and glove fit, and I thought they could be pretty good right away. Ultimately, that statement was half true. They had a great start, but not a good finish. Let's talk about the Napier era now. So going into the 2022 season, there was actually a decent amount of talent for Billy Napier to work with. He brought in a couple of guys from Louisiana, and more importantly, had big time quarterback Anthony Richardson coming back. He would end up throwing for 2,500 yards with 17 touchdowns. He also ran for nearly 700 yards and nine touchdowns on the ground, and he would later become the number four overall pick to the Indianapolis Colts. With a guy like that, you'd think the season would go much better, but honestly, there was a lot to be desired from Anthony Richardson. At running back, you had a pretty good group as Montreal Johnson led the team with 841 yards and 10 touchdowns, and then you had Trevor Etienne, who blew up as a true freshman. They also had Naquan Wright and former five-star Lorenzo Lingard. In terms of guys catching the ball, big-time recruit Xavier Henderson stepped up, and they also brought in two impact transfers in Ricky Pearsall from Arizona State and Justin Shorter from Penn State. There was obviously plenty of talent on the roster, but for some reason they just couldn't get anything going. Everything was set up for Billy to have a great first year, and everything would start out on top. They hosted number 7 Utah, and in one of the best games of the 2022 season, Florida had a late interception on quarterback Cam Rising, and they won 29-26. Florida was back just one game into the Billy Napier tenure. Everyone was ready to run through a wall for him, but honestly, that has been the height of the era. 
After that, they lost to Will Levis in number 20 Kentucky, barely survived against USF, and then lost on the road to Tennessee. All three of those games weren't great, and then they barely squeaked by Missouri in early October. After that, the losses really started to pile up as they got beat by LSU, dismantled by Georgia, lost by a touchdown on the road to Florida State, and even lost on the road to Vanderbilt. That was the absolute low, but sandwiched between that was wins against Texas A&M and South Carolina. That'd be enough to get them to six wins, and they would go to the Las Vegas Bowl, where they would play against number 14 Oregon State. The Beavers were coming off a breakout season under their head coach, Jonathan Smith, and in that game, things did not go well for Florida. They lost 30-3, and the game was never close. All in all, Florida had a disappointing 2022 season. While they did have that one win against Utah, they really didn't do anything else. They beat South Carolina and Texas A&M teams, which weren't very good, a Missouri team that was just average, and then barely skated by USF. They also had that terrible loss to Vanderbilt, and then getting killed in the bowl game, it was not great. But then again, it was year one, he made a bowl game in year one, and they did have their moments. Unfortunately, he would sort of have to do a roster revamp going into 2023. At quarterback, you had Anthony Richardson lead for the NFL, so he decided to bring in Graham Mertz. Mertz was a huge deal coming out of high school, but he was extremely underwhelming at Wisconsin. He thought he could take a chance on him. After that, there was also some major problems at the quarterback spot, as one of the players on their roster got in some big trouble behind the scenes, and then their incoming recruit also got a scholarship pulled. To make matters worse, Jaden Rashada had the whole NIL thing, so the quarterback position was completely botched by Billy. At running back, they returned both Etienne and Johnson, and both of those guys would end up having actual really good seasons. They combined for nearly 1,600 yards and 13 touchdowns, and Florida was built to run the ball. Graham Mertz was one of the more accurate passers in the conference, as he completed 73% of his passes, but a lot of this came in garbage time. He ended up finishing with 2,900 yards with 20 touchdowns and 3 picks. Mertz actually had a pretty decent year, and honestly, with the right development, could be special in 2024, but we're talking about 2023 right now. In terms of the receiver spot, Ricky Pearsall and Eugene Wilson became the two biggest names, and then the defense was also solid. In week one, they'd have to go on the road to Utah, and this time, the Utes were not going to let them win. I remember Utah scored on the first play with their backup quarterback, and the game was never really that close, but a lot of dumb penalties and dumb errors ended up costing Florida a chance to make it close. Utah won 24-11, and then from there, Florida would actually get back on track. They beat McNeese State at home, beat Charlotte at home, and then between that was a huge win. This came against number 11 Tennessee in the Swamp, and in a duel between Graham Mertz and Joe Milton, Florida ended up winning that one, and the final score was 29-16. While Tennessee did somewhat fall off, that was their most impressive win of the season. They were now 3-1, but then Billy would squander the season again. They go on the road to a red-hot Kentucky team, and Ray Davis ran all over them, and Florida lost 33-14. It was once again another setback, proving they couldn't take the next step. But after that, they beat both Vanderbilt and South Carolina, before the losing would really begin. It started in late October, as they got drilled by number 1 Georgia, and then lost a really bad one to Arkansas. This game came in overtime, and if you don't remember, Arkansas was atrocious. This game also came at home, and this was just really bad. From there, they had a gauntlet of a schedule, and honestly, they were not going to make a bowl game. It started with a road game against number 19 LSU, and Jaden Daniels dismantled them. After that, they went on the road to number 9 Missouri, and despite Graham Mertz getting hurt, Max Brown actually gave him a chance to win the game. He put them in field goal range, and they took a 31-30 lead over Mizzou, but then Mizzou drove down the field, converted an insane fourth down, and then kicked the game-winning field goal. Florida's bowl hopes were pretty much done from there. But then they were gifted another opportunity. Jordan Travis was hurt, so their game against number 5 Florida State was going to be a little bit more manageable. Unfortunately for Florida though, they also had their backup as Merch was hurt and Max Brown would have to make the start. They'd end up losing 24-15, and Florida finished with a 5-7 record and a 3-5 mark in the SEC. After starting out 5-2, they finished 5-7, and, and Billy Napier's seat was scorching. The 2023 season was bad, but, but there's been a lot of dumb things that have happened to Florida. After that 6-7 year one record, Florida had 26 players enter the portal. The biggest event of that offseason that really showed how far Florida was behind was the Jaden Rashada saga. At this point, it's probably the most famous recruiting story for Florida as he was offered a $14 million NIL deal. 
Unfortunately, Florida could not make the deal happen, so when that fell apart, it was embarrassing and he went to Arizona State. It showed that their rivals and other programs had a better handle on NIL, and Florida really needed to catch up. They upgraded their facilities, but now it was time to figure out NIL. 22 games into his tenure, Florida's 11-13, and, and losses to Vanderbilt and Arkansas have really stained his resume. Napier had the fewest number of wins of any Florida head coach through their first two years since Charlie Pell, and it has honestly been really bad. Napier's also the first football coach since the end of World War II to start his career at back-to-back -back losing seasons. When asked if he was on the hot seat, their AD said, quote, I don't care. It doesn't matter, it's a made-up term, and people can put him on whatever list they want, but it has nothing to do with reality. We all do know it is reality. In terms of their next season, Florida lost a couple big players. Trevor Etienne transferred to Georgia, Caleb Douglas also transferred, and Max Brown left for Charlotte. Those are just some of the names, but they did bring in a couple of big players, most notably Penn transfer Joey Slackman. While they have offset some of their losses with some decent portal pickups, it's still very concerning. Next year's roster is going to look a lot different, and that'll either be worse or better for Billy. While they have a good recruiting class coming in, Paul Feinbaum said, quote, Billy Napier is picking up a few players, and I'm really eager to see how they land. But having a big recruiting day nowadays doesn't mean anything and doesn't have the same impact as it used to. To Feinbaum, Napier can't recruit himself out of this position because he needs to win. Doesn't matter how many big names he brings in, he's got to start converting this talent into actual real wins and real progress. He said, quote, I don't think even a major haul is going to dramatically change the momentum of that program. Florida was ranked as high as number two nationally in the 2024 recruiting rankings, but they'd end up dropping. Couple that with a really tough 2024 schedule, and it is not going to be an easy year for Billy. They have to play both Miami and Florida State in the non-conference, plus have to travel on the road to Tennessee and Texas and get Georgia, Ole Miss, LSU, and A&M. There aren't many guaranteed wins on that schedule, and Billy's going to figure out some things quick. While things have gone wrong, there is some reason for optimism. His first move this offseason must be to fix special teams. There have been multiple times where special teams has legitimately costed Florida a chance, and it most notably happened during that Arkansas game. Napier would probably also benefit by being more of a CEO, as he needs to stop calling plays and hire an actual offensive coordinator. Mizzou did that this past season, and it did wonders for them. They also, I think, need to change the offense. In an era of college football where aggressiveness and effective passing tends to win the most games, his scheme is considered conservative and outdated. But because they haven't had great offensive lines, they've had to rely on running the ball, and it just seems that they're behind, and they just don't have the scheming to win a lot of these games. Graham Wirtz was solid last year, but honestly, he was the classic example of a guy who looked good on analytics, but didn't actually do much to convert games to wins. Florida also played from behind a ton last year, as in seven of their Power 5 matchups, they had to play from behind. The biggest reason for optimism for them, though, is two reasons in my opinion. Billy Napier has won everywhere he's been, and two, I really love their new quarterback, DJ Lagway. He's probably the most prized quarterback to come to Florida since Will Greer or Jeff Driscoll, and I think he's up for the task of leading Florida to greener pastures. Him and the commits are really bought in on fixing Florida, and I think honestly this year will be a little bit different. I think the expectation is just going to be to get to a bowl game because of how hard the schedule is, but 2025 is a year that I'm really looking forward to watching Florida. They've had a lot of problems, but a lot of this stuff is fixable. They have the resources, the money, the talent, and the fan support to win big. And in an era where it's going to be now easier than ever to make the college football playoff, the future I still think is bright in Gainesville. We'll have to wait and see though. Billy could either flame out and get fired, or he could fix it. I don't think there is any middle ground, but what do you guys think? If you're a Florida fan, what has gone wrong? What are your expectations for this season? And what do you think of head coach Billy Napier? Be sure to let me know down below. Leave a like if you want to support today's video. Let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I can cover next. And check out all of the videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon. And until next time, peace.